Hello, YouTubers, fellow hams, travelers, electronics enthusiasts, and everybody else. Well, I needed a little bit of a break from radio. Um, I've been doing so much radio content, and that's the primary focus of the channel, sure, but uh, you can get burned out on something after a while. And uh, I was thinking, I, I want to do a project. I want to do something that uh, maybe I haven't thought about for a while, and I had an idea um, years ago. Uh, let's go way back, early 1990s. I built a digital picture frame, and this was before the big craze. Um, I had an old laptop that uh, was no good anymore, and so I uh, flipped the screen around and built the whole thing onto the back of a big wooden picture frame and had it up on my wall. And uh, I'd show images on it, uh, videos, um, it had a Wi-Fi adapter, and uh, NASA had just started streaming live video from the space station. Sometimes I'd put that up there. It was it was fun. It was an, it was a fun project. Uh, and then uh, in the late 1990s, digital frames, as digital photography grew, digital frames became a thing, and uh, a market was created, and they were sold and uh, all over the place. You can still buy them all over. Uh, they show uh, a static collection of images. Uh, that you upload into them. Some of them connect to the internet and you can remotely upload to them so you could gift a, a digital frame to your grandparents and uh, occasionally load it up with images um, that uh, across the internet, you know, things like that. They're, they're pretty neat. Um, but back then I wanted to do living photographs. I wanted to do animated photographs, um, you know, with motion. Uh, and then sometime later well, I, I, I played around with it with that laptop, uh, and the obvious solution was uh, to shoot video, uh, set up a scene, fo uh, set up a camera, uh, framing a scene like a photograph, and then shoot video of it. Um, the problem, though, was file size. Uh, in order for it to really be effective, you'd have to have 15 minutes, 20 minutes, a half an hour uh, long video uh, of the scene. And you'd be, you'd end up with files, movie files that were hundreds of megabytes to a gigabyte or more. And that just became an issue with storage space, of course, and that uh, well exceeds the storage space of a, of a small digital picture frame. And uh, very few of them will play video. And if they do, it's jerky and at a low resolution and uh, usually short clips, you know, uh, five second clips, 10 second clips because the file size. Uh, and I didn't think about it for a while, and then Harry Potter came out, and uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the Harry Potter movies and noticed the uh, the Daily Prophet newspaper in the in the show had animated photographs, and that started me thinking about it again. Uh, again, though, the problem is file size. If you're going to shoot video, uh, it's just not really workable. Well, uh, I revisited that idea recently uh, with some video that I'd shot. Uh, when I was down in uh, Quartzsite, it had rained the night before, and in the morning the clouds were drifting across the hills. And you're watching that up here. Um, and uh, I, I had an idea for how to to do the living photograph idea and keep the file sizes down. And in fact, this clip that you've been watching since the beginning of the video is only 30 seconds long. And by this point, it has looped several times, but I'll bet you didn't notice. I figured out a way to take a much shorter video clip and seamlessly loop it uh, without a stutter, without any visible break, uh, without any obvious visual cues to let you know that it's looping. And in fact, this, uh, this one has looped several times so far in the video, and I bet you haven't noticed. So this is beginning to make my, my living photograph digital frame idea look like it's a real possibility. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build my own digital picture frame and uh, I'm going to load it up with, with live photographs, living photographs. Um, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, as you can tell from this one, it, it's, it's definitely doable. Uh, so... What am I going to use to build it? Well, um, 
I got on the web and I found this little LCD screen that you can buy for a Raspberry Pi Zero. And this looks about perfect. I'd like it to be bigger, but I really can't afford much bigger. So I'm going to go with the small one just as a proof of concept and, and build the project. Uh, the Raspberry Pi Zero is about the smallest, lowest power single board computer that I can get that's easily easy to work with. And so that'll be the brains on the, uh, on the back of the frame. And it should have plenty of power to play back these, these short video clips looping, uh, especially at the resolution of that screen. Now you could definitely use a larger screen. There's larger screens available for the Raspberry Pis. And the software that I'm going to develop to, uh, to run the, the frame should work on any of the Pis. So you could build it with a larger Raspberry Pi with a larger screen, uh, you know, however you want. The key is going to be, one, the software, and two, the video clips and how you make them. And it's really easy. It's, it's such a simple solution. I'm surprised I didn't think of it years ago. So I put together a tutorial on how I create the video clips. Uh, let's go watch that. So creating the infinite looping videos is the tricky part. Uh, I'm using Kden Live as my video editor. It's a free open sourced video editor, kind of on par with Sony Vegas or something like that. It's a timeline editor. It's very powerful and it's free. I use it for all my video production uh, for my YouTube channel. Now to create our looping clip, we need a seamless dissolve. Now I have imported my Drifting Clouds video, which you can see here. And it's uh, shot on a tripod so that there's not any camera motion or no appreciable camera motion. In the scene, the motion is the clouds drifting across, and it's fairly consistent uh, from the beginning of the clip to the end of the clip. We have pretty much the same motion. So we really only need a very, very gentle dissolve uh, at the end of the clip back to the beginning of the clip. I'm going to drag this clip down to my timeline, and I'm going to put it right at the beginning of the timeline. Uh, uh, and I'm going to throw away the audio. We're not going to be using the audio, so I've ungrouped the audio and video. I'll delete the audio. So now we have our clip, and uh, we need to, at the end, dissolve back to the beginning. So I will copy. I'll go down here, and I'll paste. I'll drag the two over each other, and I'll add a wipe. Now, by default, our wipe is a dissolve. And uh, it looks somewhat like this. Pretty smooth. You didn't really notice it. But being a dissolve, well, you could use, uh, you could use several methods. A dissolve kind of dissolves the entire frame from one to the other. Sometimes that might be visible. Uh, if you don't have a place where the motion is not quite matched, you might actually see the dissolve happening. Uh, sometimes you can make that less apparent by changing it from a dissolve to, well, I like to use cloud, which is kind of a fractal random dissolve pattern where uh, it's, it's dissolving in, in, in a fractally way across the entire image. Breaking up that dissolve a bit can hide some motion. So you can either use a straight dissolve or use <clears throat> something that's more randomly fractally like that. I, I tend to use that. For some reason that seems to work better at tricking the brain into not seeing the actual dissolve happening. The other thing is this softness setting. Now what this does is this makes the leading edge of the wipe um, dissolve, a dissolve edge. It, it, it kind of spreads it out over the edge. And by increasing that softness all the way, um, that's going to be pretty invisible, provided that there's no major changes to the items and objects that are in the scene. So if there are major changes, you might need to find a different place on the video uh, where there's less of a change. Like from here 
you can see that there's a dramatic change in the clouds. I might find a place where they more or less resemble the starting point, right? So you want to find a place on the video where the change is not as dramatic or not as not as apparent. Um, in this case, with these clouds, they're soft anyway, so the change is not going to be all that visible. So let's let's look at our dissolve. Now we shouldn't see any real obvious changes here as the time as the scrubber moves across the wipe. So let's watch. Yeah, you can if you know what to look for, you can see it, but it's very, very subtle. Let's watch it again. See very, very subtle change. Uh, we can make that even more subtle by increasing the time that it takes place. And in fact, we do need this wipe to be a very specific duration. What that duration is doesn't matter. The longer, the better. I'm going to set it to five seconds. So we'll increase our duration here to, oops, too far. Let's say five seconds exactly. And it's important to, to have this to, uh, a nice round number that you can remember. So I'll set that to five seconds. You can see our wipe increased here. So I need to move it to where the end lines up with this clip. Move this clip to the beginning. Lines up with the wipe. It'll snap to it. Now let's watch it again. Yeah, see, you really can't see it happening. It's so subtle, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now, to make our video infinitely loopable, I'm going to move the playhead right to the end of this wipe, okay? And to get it to get it precisely there, I'm going to turn off this video track temporarily. So now we see black, and using the arrows, I'm going to move the playhead one frame at a time there. Okay, so that's the last frame of video 1. I'll go one frame beyond this track okay one frame beyond it so now i'm seeing black because i've got this one turned off i'll turn it back on and what we'll do is we'll chop this video right here shift r in kden live is the shortcut to cut a video so we'll cut that and we'll throw away this part so what we have now is at this point in time we have dissolved back to five seconds in on our video clip so I'll go back here with the playhead and we'll move that to precisely five seconds. And again, I'll use my arrows and right here I can see where I'm at. Precisely five seconds, exactly the point at which we have dissolved back into this beginning of the clip, you see. And again, I'll shift R to chop the video at that point. We'll delete that segment. Now what we have is from the five second point on this clip is where it starts. It starts precisely where this dissolve back to it ends. So from this point to this point is a seamless cut. When we reach the end of the dissolve at five seconds in on our original clip, we loop right back to exactly that point, exactly the same frame. So it will be a completely invisible transition from the beginning to the end of the resulting video file. All I need to do now is I use my spacer tool here to eliminate that space at the beginning, put this right back to the beginning of the timeline, and I'm ready to render it. And when I render this out, I will end up with a clip that as long as you are on repeat, you're looping it, will go infinitely with no visible beginning or end. The beginning and the end are hidden by our, our clever soft dissolve here. So I will render that out to my final file. And let's see here. Um, I've already done it. That's why all my settings are, are set here. But I have picked the output file name cloudsinfinite.mp4 in my looped videos directory. That's where my result is gonna be. I'm using MP4. I'll hit render to file and the rendering will, can, will begin. So that's the trick. Um, making the looping video clips small enough that you could load many of them up into, uh, into the Pi's SD card. 
Uh, and uh, all you really have to do is just go out and shoot short videos of, of scenes in motion that you want to use. I've got uh, three that I've done so far, and I'm going to do several more. I've got some ideas uh, for uh, various um, pictures or video pictures that would be attractive and nice to have in a frame. The, uh, the trick is to find motion and to minimize motion in the scene so you don't have objects. You know, like if you had a street with a car driving by, you'd see the same car drive by over and over again. Obvious, cu obvious clue that you're looking at a looped video. So the trick will be scenes where the motion is not as repetitive but obvious. Uh, this is another one I did of the, of, uh, uh, the river with some balanced rocks that were out there that another resident here at the community did. Joe, he, he balanced a whole bunch of stuff out there. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. But, you know, there's not a lot of motion. The most motion is that plant down in the corner. And as I uh, said in the tutorial, um, you know, you want to look for areas where whatever's moving is back at close to the same position it was at the beginning, you know, so the dissolve is, is just not as obvious and hard to spot. Uh, so, uh, you know, some other ideas that I've had is, is uh, snow falling on a, on a country scene, uh, waterfalls, um, maybe flocks of birds, um, uh, branches and flowers and trees in motion. Uh, uh, you know, it's endless. Anything that you could frame as a photograph that has subtle motion in it could become a living photograph in this digital frame. So I've ordered the parts, as I mentioned, the LCD screen, and I've got a Raspberry Pi Zero coming. They'll be here uh, in a couple of days. And in the next video, um, I'll show you the frame. We'll put it together with the Pi, and uh, we'll talk about the software and how it's going to work to loop the videos. Um, I'm going to try to also work in network access so you could add to the collection over your Wi-Fi network, the, the Pi Zero W which I ordered, has Wi-Fi, so it should be able to connect to the network and be accessible remotely. Might even be possible to do remote control. Um, I think I'm going to uh, allow the software to intelligently include static images. If you just had a bunch of JPEGs you wanted to load in there, you could. And, and if it's a, a video clip, then it will animate. And if it's a static image, it would just be a static image. You know, and I'm thinking about the software and how to make it customizable and extendable and and flexible. So that'll be uh, the next video. We'll be putting it together and talking about the software and showing you the completed uh, project. So stay tuned for that and I hope you find it interesting and we'll see you in that video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.